Hi, my name is Kayla Ross. I am a registered respiratory therapist at Mansfield Rider Medical Center in Johnson, Vermont, and I'm going to talk with you a little bit about the infant pacifier nebulizer that is used to deliver aerosol medication, respiratory medication to pediatrics or infants that are in some kind of need for a respiratory medication, whether it be they're in respiratory distress, whether they have some kind of lung condition or disease and they need some kind of medication to relieve what's going on with them breathing wise. So on slide number two, I have the agenda for which I will be discussing. I'm going to go through some of the current ramifications of the techniques that they're using, some of the different techniques that they're using uh, versus the pediatric nebulizer, pacifier nebulizer, and then I'm going to talk about what is the pacifier nebulizer and what are some of the benefits that come with using it versus uh, the other techniques that they use. I have a budget chart set up comparing the pacifier nebulizer with uh, an aerosol mask that they use to deliver to other patients. I have a chart comparing the cost of the two and some of the cost savings, a conclusion, and questions and answers that you might have. So currently, uh, some techniques used, it's called the blow-by technique used for children. So what I have here, this is a regular adult nebulizer with the mouthpiece. Um, you'd have your tubing that comes here connected to whatever source you were using to power it, whether it's oxygen or air, and they would put a piece of tape over the side, the mouthpiece side, and as you turned on the flow meter, as you turned it up, the drug would be aerosolized and it would come out of here and they would hold this end to the patient's face and this blow-by, it would be a blow-by technique. So the first ramification I want to talk about is poor deposition of in the inhaled drug and I put a little quote up here from uh, one of the authors Arzu Ari, crying is an exhalation maneuver and a turbulent flow will be created by the transition of air passing through the tongue causing deposition of the aerosolized particle into the oropharynx and the hypopharynx. So deposition depends on a couple of different things Different aerosols have different particle sizes and the movement of those sizes um, and also the breathing pattern of the patient is going to depend on where the drug gets deposited into the lung. Certain drugs are made into a certain size to go into certain parts of the lung, but breathing patterns have a pretty big effect on what happens to the drug itself as you're breathing it in. And like most children that don't feel good, they're being very uncooperative and they're crying because they really don't feel good and the last place they want to be is in a scary hospital with people holding a mask in front of their face. It's just not something they like so they tend to be crying and this allows for pretty poor drug deposition which could then allow for them to be into the hospital longer, not resolving the distress that they're in, getting more treatments. So that's the first ramification. Um, I have a picture here of a very unhappy child. She's crying. She's got this big mask held up to her face by someone and she just doesn't like it. Um, so crying children tend to have short breathing patterns. It doesn't allow for a laminar flow, which would make the drug deposit deeper into the lungs. They have uh, a very turbulent inspiratory flow from all their huffing and puffing and no breath hold. So the deposition is pretty poor for the medication that they're trying to breathe in. Another ramification is eye irritation. Some drugs that are indicated for bronchospasms and constrictions and wheezing and any kind of respiratory issue that's going on, they also have some pretty harsh systemic effects on you as well. So some of these can actually uh, worsen any pre-existing eye condition that someone might have. And also, you know, with children, you want to be careful. Their eyes, and especially infants or newly born children, their eyes, you always want to be careful. So uh, an author from Egan's Respiratory uh, Care, Fundamentals of Respiratory Care, had stated that 
a nebulized solution of a medication is 10 times greater than any other inhaled form. So as this blow-by technique is used and the mask is just held up to the infant's face, it's very easily absorbed into other areas like the eyes that are so close because they're moving around and you're trying to hold this up to their face and they're moving and it's just getting everywhere. So imagine that the effects that the drug has along with the benefits, the effects too could be heightened a little bit more and irritate the infant's eyes. Another ramification is secondhand exposure of the aerosol drug. Now the secondhand exposure can be from anyone to the parents or guardians that's in the room and any of the healthcare providers that are also there, the ones that are holding it, the ones that are checking in, doing their checks. Um, so the nebulizers and especially the blow-by technique, they are nebulizing the entire room, basically putting out this aerosol that is just getting into the room and anyone is can breathe it in. So the secondhand exposure uh, personnel are also at risk for an increased um, occupational asthma. So the more they breathe in these agents that they don't need, they're getting medicine that they don't need, they don't have lung issues that can actually cause them to have some kind of asthma exacerbation or bronchospasm. So this is what we call occupational asthma and that is some of the effects that the person not receiving the medication but the person that is breathing it in can also be affected by these aerosol drugs, especially if you're holding up a nebulizer to a patient's face, a little baby specifically, you're going to be pretty close because you want to make sure that, you know, you have it next to their face and it's in the right spot. So you're at risk for the secondhand exposure and occupational asthma as well. So this is a picture of the infant pacifier nebulizer. It is the same, the bottom half is the same as the adult cup. It's just a, the cup that the solution goes into and it has a pacifier attached to it and right above the pacifier there's little nasal prongs that can set right below um, and kind of point into the infant snares. Um, so that's a picture just showing you how it's set up. So what are some of the benefits of the pacifier nebulizer? A pacifier keeps babies calm. It keeps them from crying and flailing about and it makes them, you know, a little bit better able to handle the situation they're in so it's all so it's gonna keep them calm during this treatment because they're sucking on the pacifier and they're getting the treatment at the same time so by them being more calm they're gonna have a more laminar flow which will allow for better drug deposition into the lungs the particles are getting to where they need to be into the lungs to do what they need to do this is gonna have a better patient outcome you know maybe a shorter stay for the patient and you know they'll get better faster they won't need as many treatments and a happy baby is a happy mommy which is a happy hospital we like when babies and mommies are happy so the next slide here is the budget and cost savings on the left I have the cost if we were to buy a hundred of the pacifier nebulizers and a hundred of the nebulizer mask it's just the same thing it's just a mask instead of a pacifier that goes in front of the children um, the pacifier nebulizers are $9.10 a piece, which is expensive, but the uh, nebulizer mask is $13.89, so it is a little bit more expensive. Um, so is it worth the trial of buying these pacifier nebulizers? I think so. $9.10 versus $13.89. And then you have to think about the decreased length of stay or increased um, those costs and the need for more treatments, things like that. So if you were to go ahead and buy a hundred of each or a hundred of the pacifier nebulizer, you'd be saving $485, which is a lot. So in conclusion, uh, with better drug deposition into the lungs, you're ultimately going to be saving on the cost of need for treatments and the duration of stay for the patients. They'll have decreased um, length of stay. The pacifier keeps the infant calm during the treatment, allowing for a more laminar flow. The patient gets better faster because they're getting the treatment they need. They're not getting over-treated or under-treated. Uh, these 
pacifier nebulizers just like regular nebulizers they're very easy to use they're very easy to set up and they're also easy to break down and to clean whether you're at home or whether it's the practitioner using it at the hospital they're safe for the practitioners guardians patients everyone involved they're very safe for uh, as healthcare providers we are there to provide patients with the best care that includes you know, keeping up with the best methods of practice for our patients. So using something that will ultimately help the patient, I believe is very worth investing in, implementing into your hospital or your practice. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? And if not, I thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you were impressed with the pacifier nebulizer and you will give it a try on your pediatric and infant patients. Thank you.